I'm Bob Saltzman. I'm Director of Advancement for Brockton Public Schools. Tonight I'm here in my role as Executive Director of the Brockton High School Alumni Association. Uh, I get to be the first one to welcome you and to thank you for being a part of history. The Alumni Association has been presenting Distinguished Alumni Awards for 14 years, but often squeezed into like five minutes before the spring concert at the high school. So this is our first standalone event, and we're so thrilled to have you with us tonight. The Alumni Association has been going through an exciting year of strategic planning, uh, focus groups, surveys. One of the results is the addition of new categories of awards, and we'll be honoring three outstanding graduates this evening. I don't know if you're aware, there are more than 50,000 Brockton High School graduates spread throughout all 50 states and several other nations. We're going to be developing programs and services to engage alumni around the world, and we hope you'll want to get involved. That, that's my only commercial tonight. <laughs> uh, you know, looking around the room, there are at least seven decades of Brockton High graduates here. That's a span of seven decades here tonight. Uh, it, it, that's, that's part of the one thing we're very proud of. Um, but we're about to introduce you to three students who, in about 40 hours, will graduate and become our newest members of the Brockton High Alumni Association. <laughs> to, to, oversee, to oversee the presentation of this year's scholarship awards, it's my pleasure to introduce the Vice President of the Brockton High Alumni Association, Bob Martin. Hello, everybody. Um, you're in luck tonight because I have laryngitis again. So I'm going to be fairly brief, and I apologize for that. Um, an old friend of mine who used to work with me in the mayor's office used to talk about a sense of place. And I think a sense of place is very relevant when it comes to what we're, we're here tonight for. A sense of place in terms of alumni achieving, a sense of place of young, young high school graduates from Brockton who are, I'm sure will make a difference. What I've learned after the approximately 70 years is only three things. It's very easy. One is to have fun. One is to do good. Another is to do good. And the third is to remember where you came from. And I hope tonight we remember those things with the students that are graduating, our alumni, as well as others that might want to get involved in the organization. I do want to have, I think it's necessary at this point to give a round of applause to Bob Saltzman, the alumni coordinator, and our president, Carl Landerholm, for a job well done. You can Now, without further ado, the Brockton High Alumni Association has awarded $40,000 in scholarships to graduating seniors since 2006. Tonight, we'll be giving $1,000 each to three outstanding students. I should also th thank the subcommittees who put a lot of work into deliberating. They represent, these students represent more than 20 exceptional students who applied this year to the Alumni Association. Our first recipient is Maria Cardoso. Maria. <laughs> Maria immigrated from Cape Verde. She founded the Cape Verdean Student Association at Brockton High, so obviously leadership qualities. Involved with the Empower Yourself, National Honor Society, as well as Foreign Language Honor Society. She was ranked 22nd in the class of 958 people this year, and we, she, she, Maria will be attending Boston College, and her tentative major is Global Business Management. Is that correct? Babson College. I'm sorry? Babson College. Oh, Babson College. Okay, it was, I apologize. Scratch Boston College, but go Eagles, Babson College. <laughs> and her tentative major is Global Business Management. Congratulations again, Maria. <laughs> Our second recipient is Claudio Dupina Goves. Claudio? Uh, Claudia wants to become a surgeon, already taking pre-health profession courses at community college and at university level, actively involved with his church youth group, uh, as well as swimming and the African American <coughs> Club at Brockton High School. Uh, Claudia is ranked 31st in his class and will be attending Boston College. Go Eagles. Yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, our third recipient is Sarah Weatherby. Sarah, where are you? Oh, here she is. Sarah wrote a very strong essay about her passion for becoming a dietitian. I'll be talking to you later, by the way, about that. Uh, very active in various bands at Brockton High School, several honor societies, and with her church. Uh, Sarah was ranked 16th in her class and will be attending Stonehill College and majoring in health sciences on a pre-dental track. Again, another round of applause for Sarah. Sarah. Nice smile, yeah. <laughs> That's not an earthquake, by the way. Some band is playing somewhere. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. And now? Yeah. <laughs> so Thank you. Nope. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Bob Martin. <laughs> During almost 20 years, the principal of Rockton High School has advanced in our district almost like his students. Dr. Clifford Murray came to Brockton in 1999 as a science and math teacher at East Junior High School, rose to assistant principal, and then principal at West Middle School. He became principal of Brockton High last summer. He now is the steward and advocate for 4,300 students. And in what's a very busy week for him, we're thrilled he can join us. Ladies and gentlemen, the principal of Brockton High School, Cliff Murray. Hey, good evening. First of all, thank you for having me here. It's uh, really a pleasure to talk about Brockton High. For those of you that aren't sure, uh, Brockton High is alive and well. If you were up there uh, last week and this week, you would see it in action, believe me. A lot of excited young men and women. Um, I don't have a lot to say. I, I believe in brevity is a, a strength of mine, and there are few. But uh, I think it's really important to say a couple of things about the students and staff in that building. Uh, the, the teachers, uh, the administrators up there are all focused on one thing, and that is the children here in the city of Brockton. I couldn't be more proud to represent all of them here this evening. But the strength of the school is clearly the students in that building and their families. Um, for people who are naysayers or who are worried about the future of this city or our state or our country, need look no further than uh, Forest Ave because we have some remarkable young men and women there. You've met a couple this evening, but there are hundreds and hundreds of young men and women who are ready to make uh, huge contributions to society th throughout our country and throughout our city. So it is an honor. I am humbled to have been asked to go up there, and it's been a privilege this year meeting uh, all the students. Uh, obviously, I don't know 4,300 names, <laughs> but um, it has been a real joy. And for those of you that are thinking or are, uh, remembering our event that we had in the fall that was kind of rushed, our first kind of homecoming, Maybe on your calendar, circle October 19th, because it looks like we're going to try to do things in a little more timely fashion next year and have some kind of event that we can bring all of the classes from Brockton High together again and uh, celebrate, which really is truly an amazing institution. So once again, thank you very much, and I look forward to meeting and working with all of you guys again. Thank you. As I mentioned, this is our first time holding this event in such a public manner, and, and we're honored to have you here. But I, I want to introduce a couple of special guests who are with us this evening. If I miss anybody, blame me. I'm, I'm still getting used to Brockton. Uh, <laughs> let me know if you're here. Uh, um, first of all, we have several past Distinguished Alumni Award winners with us. In alphabetical order, David Gorman. <laughs> Still see it. Carl Landaholm. Bob Martin. Tom Pileski. And Janet Trask. Uh, 
We're also thrilled to have our city councilor here, Shirley Asak, in back. Um, there, there are several members of the National Alumni Association board here. And I particularly want to introduce this year's officers. You met Bob Martin, our vice president. Our treasurer is Nick Peon in the back. Our secretary and member of the Brockton City Council is Ann Beauregard. And last, but definitely not least, is our host of the evening. To bring greetings and to present our first honoree, the president of the National Brockton High School Alumni Association, Carl Landaholm. Thank you for coming. That is probably the most irresponsible remark I could make. <laughs> the honorees have achieved so many great things, and we feel that Brockton High School is the stepping stone that has made lives so much better in so many places. And we have taken on this new look of an alumni association that's proactive. And to be able to honor three distinctive young ladies for all of the good work that they've done, it's a, uh, a privilege to uh, introduce Amy Corum. Stay right there. Don't you go. I won't, I okay. Won't go anywhere. <laughs> the, the word that I've been a public speaker nationally is unaccustomed as I am to public speaking. My <laughs> opportunity is to uh, really share Amy Friedman Corum is a lifelong resident, musician, beloved parent, grandparent, teacher, community leader. She is a piano soloist who made her performing debut at age 11 with the Brockton Symphony Orchestra. Amy is also a certified personal trainer, fitness consultant, and has completed and won awards in the bodybuilding competition. And at age 17, was a finalist in the Miss Brockton pageant. Oh, <laughs> oh see? <laughs> There's magic in words. Miss Gorham attended Manhattan School of Music and Hart College of Music. After graduating, she continued her solo concert career, chamber music performances, and piano teaching. Do I give you the, the, the number of years? Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Go for it. During her 40 years of teaching, many of Amy's students have uh, been top award winners in international piano competition. She has adjudicated concerto competitions at New England Conservatory of Music, and many of Amy's students have gone to be successful music and other diverse careers. Amy Corum is a popular community leader and tireless promoter of art, music, fitness, community spirit. She produced and performs in citywide classical jazz, children's concerts, and as a producer, Amy collaborates with other leaders and well-known contributors, musicians and artists throughout the United States. Amy plays classical music at a world-class level but she likes to have fun with the local folk, blues, pop, musicians, and groups that play that many musical venues in Brockton. She is a member of the Council Chords, <laughs> which I see one up there. <laughs> Yay. Yay. They are a group of uh, Brockton City Councilors and friends who perform Irish and folk music at uh, community and charity events. Amy is on the board of directors of the Brockton Rotary, Brockton Symphony Orchestra. Her memberships include the Massachusetts Music Teachers Association, the Schubert Club, and the New England Piano Teachers Association. And as a community leader, she strives to bring innovative, high-caliber musical performances to our community, uniting the city into the uh, culture and art that it really deserves. And not written down here, but I might steal a bit of your thunder, okay? okay? 
Randy Klein was uh, requested to, uh, if he would compose a symphony about Brockton in three movements. And the high school band had the privilege of playing that beautiful piece. Uh, the first was about immigrants, because we were an immigrant city and we still are. The second was about champions. And it is inspiring that uh, Vinnie Macrina is going to have the band play that on the football field. It's outstanding privilege. And the diversity that the city enjoys was the third movement. And the roof came down because he was so well prepared because he spoke between each uh, movement. And when that kind of uh, classical sense of place takes place, we can thank Amy because she did a marvelous job of organizing it, promoting it, financing it, and I might add, at the time I was president of the Brockton Historical Society, and because of the historical component of immigrants, we had a display up there, and it was an eye-catcher. And thank you for giving me the privilege. Now, if you'd like to say something before I hand you. <laughs> well, you <laughs> I think you said it all. I said, <laughs> well, I did say unaccustomed as I am to public speaking. That's right. <laughs> well, this Brockton High School Alumni Service Award presented to Amy Friedman Corrin in the class of 1971 in recognition of her service and commitment to the betterment of Brockton. This day, May 31st, 2018, Brockton High School Alumni Association. And it's a pleasure. <laughs> Which one worth? This Pick one? It Pick it up. Okay. okay. There we go. Well, there isn't much left to say. <laughs> uh, you, you know my whole life right about now. And what I do want to also add is the fact that um, I'm very proud to have gone to Brockton High. And I went through all Brockton schools and my two children also went to Brockton High, and they both have master's degrees and more, and they're very successful, and they did beautifully at Brockton High, and, uh, and I always talk up Brockton, wherever I am, and I'm really proud to use my music to, uh, to add to the city in any way I can. And just so you know the, the, uh, the story behind the story, it's always kind of fun to know that. I'm gonna switch hands so I don't drop my new thing. Okay, okay. Um, I was at the gym one day, and I was on the treadmill, and I saw that Randy Klein was produced, was performing some kind of piece at, uh, that was being presented at the New York City Opera House. And so I texted him, I said, Randy, that's really cool, wow, congratulations, that's pretty good to have one of your uh, compositions played at the, in the New York City Opera House. I, and then I hung up from the phone, and I thought, gee, if he could do that, <clears throat> maybe he could write a piece for Brockton, some kind of a classical piece that would embody the, the feeling of Brockton. So uh, I texted him and asked him that, and he texted me back and said, can you call me right now? And here I was on the treadmill. So I <laughs> ran into my car in the parking lot of the gym, and I called him, and he said, tell me about Brockton, and I did. And it was that moment that he said, gee, I'm feeling a three-movement piece, uh, maybe the first <laughs> movement. I, I, feel, I feel like you, I'm going to compose uh, music of um, immigrants, and the second movement of the piece could be music of champions, because I told him about our um, city of champions. Uh, and, and the third movement would be music of um, immigrant, uh, no, immigrants, champions, and diversity. I said, wow, that's spot on, but we have no one to play that music if you write, so let me, give me a few weeks. I know everybody in Brockton. I'll find somebody to play it. So I went right to Vinnie Macrina, 
and I showed him the idea, and he immediately said, I love this idea, because I'm an immigrant. That's what he said. And he said, if you have this music written, I will have my advanced concert band play it next year in the spring concert. I said, OK. So I ran to the car, and I called Randy, and I said, start writing. We have a gig in a year. And uh, that's what happened. We spent a year fundraising and, and composing, and Randy came up, and he went to the rehearsal with Vinny, and, and it all happened, and 1,600 people came, and it was and we'll have this beautiful piece of music forever. Um, and it sounds like, for instance, the first movement, which was music of uh, immigrants, the first movement has xyl a xylophone tap, 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 sounding. It just sounds like a, a factory. And you really feel like it's real. It's really Brockton. So we're trying to have some pictures put with it and have a movie about it. And uh, there's, there are plenty of possibilities to uh, combine the pictures with the music. So that's what we're working on, and it's a great thing, and I'm really happy to be involved with that. So thank you. So much for my <laughs> Wait, Audrey, hold on. The Brockton High was established in 1870. In the year 2020, we're going to have a year-long sesquicentennial celebration. You know, we talked about having 50,000 graduates. Given the 150-year history of the school, more than 20% of the graduates have graduated in the past decade. So we thought it was time to recognize the accomplishments of our most recent graduates. So this is the first year we're presenting a Young Alumni Award. To introduce our inaugural recipient, here is one of our former teachers and the co-chair of our new Communications and Marketing Committee, Audrey Mabani. Good evening. Um, I have the privilege of introducing you to um, Greta Shukowskite. Did I say it right? Great. Talking about immigrants, um, Greta, do you want to come on up, Greta? Greta, Greta came here when she was five. <laughs> Greta came here when she was five from Lithuania. So um, it's just pretty exciting. I, I actually learned that when I learned about your biography. Because I met Greta at the high school when I was studying the International Club. <laughs> and. Um, Greta showed up one day, well, sophomore, junior, and said, what is this club? And I said, well, it's a club where we can learn about different cultures and different people. She goes, I'm in. This is great. She went, and she said, but where is everybody? I said, well, we've got to find them. She went down to the cafeteria and started in inviting all these kinds of people, all kinds. I, what did we have, like 20 people that came? It was amazing. I said, who is this girl? She's amazing. And if you read here, you can see how amazing she is. She, um, she was the... Uh, president of her senior class. She was a record breaker in the swim team, weren't you? Yeah. <laughs> what was uh, and uh, <laughs> and um, and then um, she went off to American University down in Washington mm -hmm. uh, with uh, international relations. Started focus. international right. relations, right? And it's then just changed just over. And she ended up in London doing her master's degree. And we actually reconnected this year, mm -hmm. I think, when she was subbing at the high school. One day she sat down in the teacher's lounge. She said, she was staring at me. She said, do you recognize me? <laughs> and I looked and I went, oh, Greta. So it was really great. And I am really excited for her to get this award because she is young, but she's dynamic. And she's dynamic, not but. And she's dynamic. And I see amazing things in her future because there are amazing things in her past. And she is a great leader right now. She is working with the, um, I don't have the name here. It's uh, the leaders, yeah, the leaders for Crossroads and a, and, um, and a group, C5 is a leadership group. And she's working at the high school with some of the high school kids, um, helping them with leadership. They just took on um, some projects for philanthropy. the mm -hmm. philanthropy in the city um, of Brockton to give back. So Greta not only is giving back to Brockton, but now she's helping the other students to also give back. And it's a, it's, it's a nice trend. Yeah, so I'm very proud for you to have this award. Thank you. Uh -huh. <laughs> 
I'm going to. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> she took it. Yes, so Sorry, I didn't no, mean to take okay. it. You have to stand over here. Okay. So this is what it says. Um, Brockton High School Young Alumni Award presented to Greta Schukowskite, class of 2011, in recognition of academic and professional accomplishments during her first decade after graduation. So not even a decade yet. Um, you definitely deserve this. Um, so this is dated, of course, for today, May 31st, 2018, from the Alumni Association of Brockton High School. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Um, <laughs> sure. Um, I didn't really have anything too much prepared, but first I want to say thank you. The award was super unexpected. I got an email and I was like, me? No, I got a letter. I haven't gotten a letter in a really long time. So <laughs> I got a letter addressed to me to my new apartment that I moved into, feeling like a grown woman. And it was just such a cool feeling to feel recognized and seen by a school that I love so much. Um, Brockton High gave a lot to me, and I feel like I gave back to Brockton High a lot while I was there. But if it didn't exist, and if the opportunities weren't there, and if the teachers and, and people that I met, a lot of my friends are here, so hi, y'all. Um, and my family is here, too. And they're just, they're important. They're, they're a mirror of me, and I'm a mirror of them. And they're all so different. I'm so different from them. And it's just a perfect reflection of the opportunities that Brockton High gives you. And the work that I'm doing now, um, I really, really love, and I think it's so important. And it's about giving back to kids um, and teens with so much potential in Brockton schools, in public schools across um, southeastern Massachusetts. So yeah, I'm really appreciative. And I hope I can continue to make Brockton proud. And I promise I'll never forget this place because it's deeply rooted in my heart and everything that I do. So thank you. And shout out to my family and my friends. Love y'all. That's good. You know, when we, when we talk about Box of Pride, you know, that should include all the outstanding graduates we have from Brockton High School. They, they take the best of their education from here and go out into the world to make a difference. To present the recipient of this year's Professional Achievement Award, it's my pleasure to introduce a classmate, Georgette Sarkeesian. Well, someone reminded me today that today is 36, 36. years since we graduated from class of 82, Brockton High, to the day. So if you, if you graduated in the class of 82, I want you to clap right now. Yay! So we have a very strong supportive class and I'm happy to be, uh, I guess, in charge of the social coordination. So I'm here to honor one of our classmates, Jan Sharkansky Singer, with an Alumni Achievement Award. This award is presented to BHS alumni who have distinguished themselves by contributions made in their own particular industry or personal work or in the betterment of humanity. Jan Singer, Chief Executive Officer, Victoria's Secret Lingerie. Oh. <laughs> Jan's, Jan's, Jan's family background is strong with generations of Brockton natives. She's a fourth generation native and a descendant of Russian immigrants. With her today in strong support are uh, several, several family members that I'd like to just talk about. Her father, who was unable to attend, um, established Sharkansky CPA firm in Brockton back in 1963, and the firm is still in business and located on Pleasant Street. Her father, however, has retired, but he's still doing consulting work for um, Paul Fireman, the founder of Reebok. Her mom, who also could not attend, is a Brockton High graduate, class of 57. She was an intensive care nurse at Cardinal Cushing Hospital, now called Good Samaritan. And she's currently enjoying golf, bridge, friends, and gardening in New Seabury and down in Palm Beach. Her aunt Helene is here, uh, her sister Elaine, Jan's aunt, 
Hibble Stone is here. Uh, she's also a Brockton High graduate, uh, class of 63. And she, she op owns and operates Brockton Iron and Steel business, which has been around for 50 plus years. Um, her brother Jim, her older brother, who was unable to attend, um, he is in finance, working at Mass General, and uh, currently lives in Hingham. Her younger brother, Ed, is here. He's a Loomis Chaffee graduate, class of 86. Ooh. He's now... <laughs> the Brockton event. Yeah. Yes. He's now a district court judge for Plymouth County. Yeah. Previously, he was a criminal defense lawyer in Brockton, served as a town moderator in Easton, and served an assistant DA in Plymouth County. Her husband, Dave Singer, who is also unable to attend, he's currently a pilot and a retired Air Force commander. He was unable to attend as his twins, their twins, Max and Sophie's um, last day of fourth grade is tomorrow and he's home getting them ready for their last day of school in Columbus, Ohio. <laughs> and Jan will be flying out tonight to get back to them. So Victoria's Secret is the world's leading intimate apparel and highly recognized retail company. As CEO, Jan's responsible for more than four billion in lingerie business, which includes intimates, sleep lounge, and sport across the globe. Jan joined Victoria's Secret in 2016 and has since rebuilt the leadership team, set the long-term strategic plan and improved same store comps, digital comps, margin performance, and the team is just getting started. Jan's educational background is graduating from Brockton High with me, class Yay. of 82. Woo! Uh, she went to Ithaca College and graduated in 86 with a degree in psychology and business. Back in the late 80s, uh, there were no computers, laptops, or PCs. So when, when Jan was looking for jobs, um, everyone would sit her down. She was circling jobs in the newspaper, and everyone would give her a typing test. However, Jan did not know how to type. I skipped that class. <laughs> exactly. You weren't in my class. Uh, she spent her college beer money selflessly to get her papers typed. So she decided after college to come back home to Boston and go to Catherine Gibbs Secretarial School to learn shorthand and typing. Mm -hmm. To this day, Jan can out-type anyone at 55 words per minute without even looking at the keyboard. It's good. <laughs> in the late 80s, Jan started her career as a secretary for a real estate developer uh, in New York, although Jan always wanted to be in the fashion industry. She, um, while she was working for the developer, she noticed on one of their leases uh, a return address label from Chanel. So well, she got excited and decided to call them and pitch that she wanted to work in the retail industry <laughs> and said, is there anyone I can talk to about a job? She found out later she was talking to the president of Chanel, <laughs> who then guided her to, uh, to human resources and gave her a job. Manage, um, she started out as a secretary and then become, uh, managed their PR teams. So in the early 90s, she diverted to an editorial job with YM Magazine as a fashion editor. So there she utilized her position to gain um, exposure to market strategy, executive teams, and be an insider in the beauty industry. So her next move was to Calvin Klein as VP of Global Communications to launch cosmetics and fragrance lines. There she gained experience in licensing, global communication, and spent time in different markets all over the world traveling. So when 9-11 came about, she was working as a VP then of uh, marketing and communications for Prada. She decided to return home. So in 2001, she came back home and worked at the Boston-based Reebok um, when it, it was looking for an executive to launch its lines of business. So after a few years of working for Reebok, Nike came calling. <laughs> and Jan knew when Phil Knight calls, you take the call. This required a move to the West Coast, to Oregon, with her boyfriend, who's now her husband, Dave Singer. At Nike, she rose to the role of VP of Global Footwear, then VP of Global Apparel. At Nike, she learned how to build teams, inspire, and make it a great place to work. She launched lines of footwear such as Nike Free, Flyknit, Lunar, and the relaunch of Nike Air. So in 2014, after a decade at Nike, and living in Oregon, Jan took her first CEO assignment and joined Spanx, based in Atlanta. So another move to Atlanta. At Spanx, she and the team evolved the vision, mission, and position to emotionally connect with today's women and the desire to be smooth, shapely, and sculpted. 
which I have on right now. (laughs) Which brings me to Jan's favorite passion, studying human behavior. She travels globally and she observes who, what, and when are buying and interviews women their reasons for buying. She calls this study of retail industry a passionate curiosity. However, her brothers just call it plain being nosy. So this led her to her current role at Victoria's Secret after the founder of CEO of L, uh, the founder and CEO of L Brands came calling. Another call she could not, uh, she definitely had to take. So from 2015 to 2017, she also held a director position on the board of Kate Spade, which, which is the original Liz Claiborne company, uh, and also the first public apparel in the company in the U.S. In her position, the board executed a landmark deal in the sale of um, Kate Spade to Coach, which is now called Tapestry. See, everything in fashion keeps changing, even the company names. <laughs> so Jan's an active supporter of Central Ohio community through her involvement in the United Way Federation and Ohio State University Comprehensive Cancer Center, James Cancer Hospital, and Solov Research Institute. In addition to her illustrious and distinguished career in the retail industry, she's received several awards. One she just got recently from her alma mater. Uh, the, uh, she got the Business Achievement Award for Continuing Leadership Excellence from the International Business Honor Society, Beta Gamma Sigma. Also, she was nominated this year and received um, from the National Mother's Day Committee as Outstanding Mother of the Year <laughs> so 2018 at the 40th Annual Ceremonies. Yep, I'm, proud. I'm so proud of you. This committee celebrates family, citizenship, and benefits save the children. She received this award alongside Chelsea Clinton and Jessica Simpson. I saw you on Extra (laughs) and Entertainment Tonight about two weeks ago, hugging Jessica Simpson. How is she? She's a nice person. Oh, good, good, good. So I'm proud to present. I am proud to present the Alumni Achievement Award to Jan Sharkansky Singer, class of 82, in recognition of her career success and leadership. have a couple things. Georgette, that was so great. Thank you so much. I feel so old. I wasn't the young alumni achiever. I thought I was. I'm a old one. Okay. So um, I would just say a couple things. Again, I'm, I'm super touched. 36 years ago, some of us walked down the field at Rocky Marciano Stadium and received our diploma. I don't know how I got there. I wasn't a great student, but I'm so grateful I got there. Um, I'm super... We did okay. I skipped the typing class at Brockton High. Never skip typing. Um, I'm also just super touched that you guys showed up tonight. I I haven't seen some of you in so long, and I am so grateful for social media and for Georgette bringing us together, and Fred and George and everybody, so thank you. Um, I'm super grateful to be here. I'll tell you what I know about Brockton. Four things that I say all the time about this place. One, family, fourth generation Brocktonian. We all grew up near each other, Auntie Lane and Mom and Auntie Edie and Nana, and we were always all together. It's a city of families. George tells me he's always here. People come back to Brockton for their families, number one. Number two, it's a city of hard work. You don't survive Brockton or Brockton High or anything Brockton if you don't work hard, as you say here. (laughs) You gotta work hard, you gotta work hard. It's a city of shoes, that works for me. (laughs) I like that, and it's a city of winning. 
and it's a city of winning. I'm so impressed with your, I mean, tenacity that you went downstairs in that cafeteria and said, I'm gonna make this, you're like amazing, and we'll talk about that after this. <laughs> city of winning, and if you wanna win, you gotta be a champion, and we are the city of champions, right? So to be a champion, you gotta work hard, number one. Number two, you have to lead selflessly. And I think when I meet people, uh, I just listened to the few words that you spoke, you clearly are putting it all out there for the kids, and I'm so grateful, so thank you for that. It's about selfless leadership. It's about taking risks, and George reminded me today that you, I thought we won the Super Bowl championship. He reminded me that we lost, but champions lose, champions fail, champions fall on their face, but they recover, and they recover quickly. And so for me, we're always be winners and champions are winners. Um, they always recover and they lean on their friends and they lean on their family for coaching, for love, and for support. That's what the City of Champions does. does. And, and champions like shoes. Did I say that? <laughs> okay. So I'm a Brockton Public School girl. I went to Hancock Elementary on Pearl Street. I went to West Junior High. Woo! I went to West Junior High. I was a red building girl. I tried to get into the yellow building. I couldn't get in. It wasn't cool enough for the yellow building. But I hung out in the yellow building. I played flute with Vinnie Macrina. And my God, if I could see Vincent Macrina right now, I would hug him. My brother and I have talked about him for 36 years. I still play the flute. I love it. Um, please tell him I said hi, Amy. Somebody tell him. But I still think of him. Uh, very fondly. Um, I, I wasn't a great student. I was kind of a cheerleader. I was an alternate one year, I think. I wasn't. So I never kind of fit in. And my point is, I, was not, I, wasn't, I wasn't the head of the class. I was a C student. I did C work. I didn't know what it meant to work in business. I just knew that I was going to work hard and do whatever I could. And that's all it ever has been for me. But I learned that hard work here with the support of my family and to win. So I thank you very much. I keep on. <laughs> How many Brockton High graduates in the room tonight? <laughs> this is great. You, you are all such an untapped resource. We, we need your engagement as volunteers, as donors, as mentors for the students. You know, please look at the back of tonight's program book for many ways that you can get involved. Uh, by the way, you could, that concludes nominating people for next year's awards. Um, we, we hope you can join us. Afterwards, we have a, a nice dessert and champagne reception planned. I'm going to ask the honorees and the Alumni Association officers to come up to the front at the end. To, uh, we need a few more photographs. We, we thank the Stacey Adams Cultural Arts Building for your hospitality tonight. We, and Arnie Danielson. We thank you for coming. And we'll see you next year.